Okay guys, took a little break there, had um, some connectivity issues as we were going underneath a bridge, but we're back here live again. We are um, marching with the caravan of a couple thousand people here, migrant caravan heading from Tapachula to Mexico City. Um, what I think is really interesting is, let me flip this around here so you guys can see. They brought out a rope that they've actually been using to keep them all together. So no one falls behind, we're being told. So it's really interesting um, how, they're, how they're gathered and staying together down these, down these streets. But it is going to be weeks of a walk. This isn't something where they're gonna make it to Mexico City in a day. Uh, this is going to be a long, grueling walk. And what we're told is about 40% of the caravan is children and pregnant women. Most of the men that you see in front of course, our um... Oscar, Oscar, hey. Uh, so most of the people in the front, as you guys see, are are men. Um, it's got different signs. If you guys are just joining us, uh, one of them they have the American flag that has no stars on it. Now I did ask what the American flag symbolizes to them. And most of them say that it symbolizes freedom. It is, it is more of a symbol to them um, than a, a literal thing. And I don't know why they don't have the stars on there. There's been some speculation that maybe they don't believe in the states as sing single entities, but the uh, American flag itself represents freedom. Um, there's also a sign back there that says Joe Biden is for all. Um, a couple of the gentlemen in the front were saying, were pleading basically, Joe Biden let us in. I asked them if they honestly think that they are going to be able to get access to the U.S. and they said they don't know. Um, so, you know, they're hopeful. This is their, their goal is to get to the U.S. for many of them. Now, some of them do say that they are content working in Mexico. Uh, and that's what some of the activist leaders are saying is the goal is to get to Mexico City to get paperwork so that they can work legally and stay in Mexico. Well, uh, a lot of them, again, that's not the goal. The goal isn't necessarily to to stay in Mexico. The goal for most of them is to go is to go north. So once they get to Mexico City, um, the the caravan will kind of disband a little bit. They will have uh, <clears throat> buses, transportation, different things like that, depending on what their circumstances are. Likely uh, where they're going to end up going to potentially be transported over. You know, if they're going to be dealing with the cartel to get across the Rio or if they're going to try to work with a smuggler because they're not even going to have a chance of uh, being granted asylum. So it kind of gets interesting for Mexico City. But at this juncture, they are marching through Mexico, heading north. And uh, what we can tell you is a federal judge here in Mexico has given them a protection order. So has allowed them to move freely as they are, as you see this caravan here moving through uh, Mexico. But the thing is, is that protection order does not protect them from illegal activity. Well, them marching through Mexico without documents being here is illegal for them. So we are expecting to meet what they call a unit. So it's a setup of National Guard and Border Patrol agents. We are expecting to encounter that here soon. Uh, probably in a half a mile or so. So they do have hundreds of law enforcement officials that are set up, that are obviously anticipating this, this large group of migrants to, to arrive. So again, we are continuing to follow this caravan here, walking through to show you what they're experiencing, to show you what law enforcement will experience on this side to talk with them, find out what, what they're doing, why they're doing it, why, why they won't try to go through a legal process. Now, you know, I was just talking to, to Oscar uh, about it, and they, what's really interesting is a lot of them, this is what their process is. They, I go, why don't you try to do this legally? They literally looked at me like they never even heard of a way to do this legally. So, you know, it, it's a really tough situation because they think that they were given the green light to come in. Again, they literally have signs that say Joe Biden is for all, pleading for the president to let them in. 
um, saying, I mean, one of the guys said, you know, we know you need this task force. We know you need these workers. We know you need these people in America. Um, so really interesting, you know, we talk about the communication that they have together and, and what they know and how they know it and how they learn information. And they have phones, they have the, you know, the apps that we have, they have all of the the means that anybody else has. And a lot of people are talking about, oh, they have cell phones, they have money, uh, they have these things. And, you know, the, a lot of these people uh, sold everything that they had, which probably isn't a lot, um, and, and made this journey. But you gotta think about, like the phone is such a necessity in society, in any society right now. People that are homeless in Washington state, uh, they all have cell phones. So what makes you think that these people wouldn't have cell phones? That's the entity that they, you know, choose to spend some of their money on. Uh, you know, it's hard to go, well, they, if they're so broke, how can they afford a phone? We literally have that happening on the streets of Seattle. So I am, um, uh, that, I'll just leave that there. Um, but again, we've got thousands of migrants here walking through Mexico, uh, toward Mexico City. So. Um, it is a four states walk. It is a trek. We're not talking about, you know, a day's journey. There's hundreds of kids, women, pregnant women, um, in this caravan. And again, they are using, what's really interesting is they're using a rope to stay together as a group so that they don't fall behind. Um, also, I mean, when you stay in a group and there's a, there's a larger group, that's, that strength in numbers, kind of, you know, and so we're definitely seeing seeing that here. We we started at the plaza with about 800 people, probably. Now we're at about 2,000, so it's grown a little bit here. Okay, let me flip this around. Okay, so. Guys, I'm doing my best to give you facts that I know and not give you information I don't know. Uh, so if you have questions, if there's anything that you you know know and have have a question that you want me to dig into, I got you. I'll do my best. Um, but you know, I don't have an agenda at all. I'm here just showing you exactly what's going on, the facts, the situation here that these folks are dealing with, and and exactly what's going to happen when they encounter law enforcement individuals. And these are the people, and the reason I'm down here with these folks is these are the people that are gonna be trying to go to the US next, right? This is their process. This is what they go through. And the goal for the majority is gonna be the US. Now, some of them legitimately will not get into the US and know that. Maybe they've been deported. Maybe they were criminals. One guy I was talking to, he said he lived in Los Angeles for 20 years and got himself into some trouble, so he isn't going back to the US. He's content working in Mexico. He's content working in Monterey. What was that? This little kind of chunks of people that they're standing on the side of the Yeah, what's this? They get, little by little, they get into the caravan. So this is how it starts getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay. So there's a lot of people on the roads that they are waiting. Okay. And you know, as they're waiting, that's that's how the caravan in different municipal parts of this of the city of Tapachula, they get bigger and bigger and bigger. That's, okay. that's the reason why. Just, okay. just I'm sorry to interrupt. No, no, you're good. I'm just I'm just blabbing here on my life. So what about like these folks that are like sitting over here, Oscar? Like is it just like a spectacle or what? Uh, some of them yes, and some of them they they're just waiting to join. Oh. And some of them that some of them they're all the way to the front and taking a rest. Oh, Okay. Some of them are going pee. Yeah. <laughs> going pee pee. There's a lot of restroom uh, action <laughs> happening. Sorry, guys. I, there's nowhere I can put my camera that will not show that. Let's be honest here. <laughs> We're out in the woods. But. There's no gender restroom right here. There is Everybody's no, equal. <laughs> everybody's equal. Except oh. for I don't see very many women in the bushes here, Oscar. No. So let's stay on this side, Ali, because the road, this one, they're going to open it. So if you guys are hearing uh, a male voice in my feed, it's Oscar Blue. He is an independent journalist that's been covering the border uh, for quite some time and has also been um, really diving into child trafficking and 
the different abuse that's happening in caravans. Um, so he's here kind of working as um, to translate some stuff for me, but also as um, an added layer of safety and just knowledge and information and, and networking. So um, we're doing our own thing. We're reporting our own feeds. We're reporting our own information, but we are here together um, so that, gosh, strength in numbers, right? So, but again, I'm independent, he's independent. We do our own things, but we are uh, supporting each other today for several reasons. Okay, so, but if you do wanna follow him, he's solid, Oscar Blue on all of the all of the channels. Um, he's going live as well, so if I jump out or something happens, you guys can check in on his feed too. Um, so we are at, being asked, okay, what border city are they heading to? Okay, so here is what I know. Right now we are in Tapachula, very, very south. It is like a stone throw from Guatemala, okay? So Tapachula is very, very deep into Mexico. They're trying to get up to Mexico City from there. They will be transported in buses, different things like that, depending on their situation. They will be put into buses or potential, I, I don't believe that they'll fly, but mostly buses, trains, that kind of transportation. Then they will go to different border towns. Now, here's what I know. A lot of people are asking, is Del Rio going to get hit again? Is McAllen going to see this? Is La Jolla going to see this influx of people? What I have learned and what a lot of them have been saying is that area is breached, right? That area is kind of broken already. Those areas are manned. They have border patrol. They expect it. They don't want to try that route again. So they're likely not going to do the same exact thing. They might, I mean, I can't say they're not gonna go into Del Rio, but I will say they probably are aware that there is a National Guard camp set up there and there are thousands of troops there. So, you know, they're probably going to go a couple miles, you know, in either direction. Can't say where they're gonna go. The border is 192 miles uh, in the Del Rio sector. So I'm not sure where they're gonna go, but they gotta cross the Rio at some point got to pay the cartel some kind of fee because the cartel runs the U.S. Mexico border for the most part so you know they're gonna have to pay something some kind of fee um, whatever that might be and some of them what's awful is some kids are actually rented out and used as currency almost for some of these folks that need to get over and they you know don't really have funds to pay the cartel when I say pay the cartel, it might be, you know, with, with the unthinkable. That's just, I'll just leave it at that. Uh, but everybody pays a price. Everybody. Uh, monetary, fund-wise, if you do have cash, money, ten to $14,000 is what we were told the cartel was charging to get people across the Rio when we saw that huge surge uh, of Haitian migrants last month. So again... You know, ten to fourteen thousand dollars, and we're asking, where'd that money come from? Where'd you get that money? And the only thing that we can go off of is what they tell us, right? We don't know uh, anything else other than what we can investigate ourselves. But they tell us, oh, it's family, or it's a sponsor. Somebody will help them out, send them money. Uh, we know that the NGOs, the non-government organizations, help out with a lot of different things. Uh, we know the uh, United Nations is also tied into a lot of that, and we know that uh, some groups here that work with the United Nations are also here. Um, so they are, you know, working. Okay, cool. I'm going to sit down for a minute. Um, you know, so they do have... Okay. We're going to take a little break. A little power are you Are you still live right now? Yeah. Okay, so... There he is. There's the man, the myth, the legend. I was like, if you hear a man, it's Oscar. Oh, that's. I mean, my voice sometimes sounds a little masculine, but it's fine. Uh, yeah, so today, yesterday, what was like a. Well, it was like, we said it felt like eight days in one. Oh, yeah, it like, was a long day. Yeah. It's the, the problem is that the flights from Tijuana to Tapachula, they're always like that. They're always like, like 10, hour, 10, 10 hour flights in overnight. Yeah. 12 30 at night, and then. You arrive in Mexico at 6 o'clock, and then it's two-hour waits, and yeah. then you go to Tapachula, and you land right here at 1025, and you're without no sleep. So I know. The only thing then, that you got to do is go to work. <laughs> yeah, and then our room wasn't ready yet, so we, like, sat by the pool and sweated while you uh, sweated. I got in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> but 
but yeah, so we're just, you know, hanging out here with thousands of people. And I mean, again, what's your impression of it's wild. Like it's again, I think that the, the thing that blows my mind the most is what they don't know. You know, like we talk about, they, they know things, they know the route, they know how to go where they need to go. They know what they need to do. They know what kind of like, what will help qualify them to get into the U.S. But they don't even know that their claim might not be valid. They don't even know that if they got deported, they probably have no chance. Like a lot of these folks have zero chance of getting in. Mm -hmm. But nobody's telling them that. Well, you know, that's that's wild. They're using them. And that's the sad thing about it that I have said to you before. That they use this massive movement to just create an agenda of an open border. Uh, well, you see, yeah, there's a sign there that says Joe Biden is for all. Right in the front here. And uh, the, there's there's been a but I mean, a lot of these folks want to talk. And they're really grateful for the media in any capacity because, you know, they're talking about thank you for exposing this and thank you for showing what's going on. But but what they also don't understand is we're going to show it all, right? We're also going to talk about how what they're doing isn't legal. Um, now, if you are if you are seeking a viable asylum claim, that is legal in the U.S., right? That is a congressional law. That is something that happens in the U.S. And if they are facing persecution if they are threatened if they if they have a situation where they're escaping uh, from a volatile uh, environment in their country they can go to the u.s and claim asylum now the other thing a lot of people are saying is they have to claim asylum in the first country that they touch down in the first country that they are safe so to speak and, and that's a loose term safe but here's the thing that was a law that was something that the u.s did that got overturned during this current administration so you do not have to seek asylum in the first country that you are in order to get asylum in the u.s uh, so these folks are able to go to i mean when we saw the haitian migrants it was really interesting because a lot of them that i had talked to had been on their journey for a year or more but had been living or working in chile and brazil and stuff like that for like a year or more. So you would say, okay, well, then why didn't they get asylum there? Why didn't they stay there? Well, they would say, oh, well, you know, we, we couldn't make enough money to feed our families. So we're leaving there, we're coming to the US and claiming asylum there and as a Haitian. So that is something that has been happening. That is something that we know happened with the, the huge surge of migrants. It was around 30,000. Um, over a course of two weeks, and at one point there were 15,000 beneath the International Bridge, if you guys remember that. So, um, and what at that time, Alejandro Mayorkas, the uh, DHS secretary, had said that they had sent back about 2,000 people at that junction. Now, in uh, August alone, they have not released September numbers yet from CBP, which is uh, Customs and Border Protection. But in August alone, the White House press secretary was saying under Title 42, they turned back 90,000 people. Okay, so I went and I looked at stats. Well, there were 230,000 encounters. So that means 140,000 stayed, right? So, you know, when we hear numbers and we hear stats, I'll do my best to go and check them, to go double check and look and see, you know, not that that, that that claim is, is false or, or not, but just to see the comparison. And I like to look back at different years and different administrations to see what's going on and, and to see what the trends look like. Because last year we were in the pandemic. Of course, this year we are as well. So that should not make a huge difference. But I don't want to just look back into one administration in one year and say, this is, this is what happened. And oh my gosh, we only had, you know, 400,000 encounters last year and we're at 1.5 million this year. Okay, yes, that is true. However, during the Trump administration, there was a, a time frame where we saw 900,000 encounters, right? So that's why it's important to make sure you're looking at the big picture and looking at a bunch of the different statistics and not just one year or one one phase, right? One, one thing. So we're definitely looking at that. But on average, we see about 450,000 encounters a year, just looking over the past 10 years for um, um, Customs and Border Protection. Again, right now we're at 1.5 million. And we know that a lot of folks have stayed. A lot of them are given an NTR, which is a notice to return, or an NTA, which is a notice to appear. 
And that is um, basically what will bind them, if you will, it's basically an agreement, to say if they're, once they're allowed in and they claim asylum, they will basically get 12 to 36 months before they see a judge. And that is their agreement, that they will go and see a judge, right? That they will show up at an immigration office. We know the statistics aren't fantastic about how many, we don't know exactly how many uh, return for court dates, but you know, a lot of folks come here and they immediately start working. They will, you know, end up with a family, end up having children, things like that. And 12 to 36 months is a very long time. So, you know, a lot of these folks get here and hit the ground running and they'll go do any under the table work that they can. There's one, one gentleman that I was talking to, he's like, I just want to work two jobs. I don't even care what it is. I'll, I will come there and I will, you know, work in, in whatever capacity. So, so it's really interesting to see. Um, but again, we are in Tapachula, marching with about 2,000 migrants, mostly from Central America. Mostly, um, that's what this group is that we're seeing. The last couple that we've seen, a lot of them were Haitian migrants. Um, but this one we are seeing for the most part, it's uh, people from Central America. A lot of single adult males, a lot of males that are, you know, between 18 and 25 looking age group, which that is typically the, the heaviest population in the, in the migration, but it's also the heaviest population that's going to be sent back under Title 42, which is that health code that the Trump administration put into place because of the pandemic. So basically that is the closed border policy right now, but we know that when you hear the White House press secretary say you sent 90,000 people back under Title 42 in one month, but 130,000 stayed, 140,000, excuse me, stayed. So, you know, it's, it's interesting because that, that's, that's not a very closed border policy. But when you talk to law enforcement, that's what they'll say too in, in the US. They'll say, you know, our border's porous, our border's open, everybody knows it. And, and so that, that's, that's the reality for a lot of these folks. But again, there's a big, oh, there, there's the Joe Biden sign, big and outstretched now. Joe Biden is for all is what that one says. Uh, and people in the front there are, are like pleading, you know, Joe Biden, let us in, let us in. So they definitely, that's the goal for most of them. And they've got a rope here. Looks like the medians are kind of keeping them together right now, but they do have a rope that they're using that they're outstretching along the um, perimeter kind of of their group. And that's kind of keeping them all together uh, so that while they're marching, you know, they can stay in their large group. Here's that Joe Biden is for all sign right here. So they definitely aren't, uh, aren't pretending that they aren't coming into the country, you know, in part because of this administration. So is that what you're hoping for? Is yes. that by the time you get there, he'll yes. change his yes. mind? Yes. I'm sure he's going to change his mind. And what Why are you, are you sure? Because Where do you think? Where's, where's Ghana? Ghana. Ghana. What do you think about Kamala Harris going to Guatemala and saying, do not come? So you, still believe, you still have faith. <laughs> They're pleading on them to come. Now, what did you what did you leave Ghana for, sir? What did you leave Ghana for? What did you leave West Africa for? Give me a couple. I don't think so. Yeah. Political. Okay. Health. Everything. Everything was bad for you much, there. Much things, much things. Okay. Well, and what are you? What do you want? What are you hoping for in America? What are you hoping for? 
better life. A better life. Okay, do you have family? Are you traveling alone? Alone? Are you scared? Are you worried? Okay. You have hope. Okay. What is what is Joe Biden is for all mean to you? That's why you're working. I know he's a man with so many. I don't know what to say about. Why? Why now? Why is it because of Joe Biden that you're that you think you can get in now, or why? Why now? The best time, because of the administration. Because of Joe Biden. All right. What's your name? Nice to meet you. Thank you. Oh, we missed the care. We missed. Him. <laughs> we gotta go that way. They're going to the gas station, apparently. I don't know what's happening there. Where are they going? Okay, so you guys heard him. He's from Ghana. And he was saying, now is the time. It's the best time because of Joe Biden. Because Joe Biden is for all. That is what they believe, is they are, they know that the border's closed, border's closed, but they said, we hope he'll change his mind. They believe he will change his mind by the time that they get there. They believe Joe Biden is a man of peace and they have hope. They are pleading with the administration to let them in. That's what they want. So I think they're, Oscar. I think they're taking a little, little break here, potentially. Okay, so let me flip this back around so you guys can see what's kind of transpiring here. And we're in, so we're in Tapachula. We are, if you guys don't know where that is geographically, that is just a stone throw away from Guatemala. A lot of people tell me that they took a little raft over from Guatemala, it cost them $2 uh, to get over to Tapachula. And then they're marching from here up to Mexico City, is what the activists tell us. And then from Mexico City, basically uh, what they want to do there, what the activists are saying is that they want to get documents. They want to get paperwork that will allow those who want to stay in Mexico and work in Mexico to stay in Mexico. Here's the thing though, most of them want to go to the US. Most of them have told us, you know, we want to go to the US. And so, um, and I mean, you're hearing most of the people that we're, that we're speaking with as well saying the same thing, that that's, a, that's a, the goal, that's the plan. They hope that, that Joe Biden will change his mind. And you can see right here, Joe Biden is for all. Um, so you've got this huge, massive group right now. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna pop off my live for a little bit. I'm gonna get some video, gonna kinda regroup a little bit here, and then I'll pop back on in just a little bit, but I'm gonna save my battery a little bit, those things, uh, while we are just taking a little break. Um, so that's what we're doing right now. Again, if you're just joining us, thank you. Uh, Oscar Blue is also live streaming. We are out here uh, working, uh, supporting each other independently. Uh, because there are a lot of folks out here. I don't know that many people at all out here. And so he's definitely been a good connection and a good uh, security kind of system too for me and also working to help me translate some, some things. So if you guys wanna follow him, he's also live streaming as well. Um, but again, we're taking a little break here. Uh, so we're gonna pop off. I'll be back in just a little bit. Stick with me today. A lot happening today, you guys. We're gonna be out here all day, so. Gotta conserve some of that energy. We'll see you in just a little bit, all right? Thank you.